Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid, and in this episode we're just going to have a quick look at how we diagnose this problem with the Sterling B2B that wasn't working. And uh, the error shown on the B2B was quite simple. This is really not rocket science, but uh, it may help some folk that are finding a problem with the B2B charge are not working. In this particular case, as I said, the um, B2B was reporting a low voltage. It was uh, pretty much 12 volts that it was reporting. And uh, it, when, when the engine is running, the starter battery should show a much higher voltage. In, in fact, when we checked the starter battery, it was showing 14 volts. So these were my uh, two tools that I used to help diagnose a problem. Really inexpensive multimeter. You can get them from Screwfix for about uh, 10 quid for the cheapest one. And you can go up in price to about 60 quid if, if you start getting the expensive ones even more. And also a very inexpensive uh, clamp meter. I wouldn't be traveling without these two in my motorhome. Really handy tools to have. So anybody who's worked with Fiat know you remove this carpet and under there is a cover. And uh, under that cover is the starter battery. So we checked and the starter battery was showing uh, about 14 volts when the engine was running. We then checked back at the DC-DC and its voltage was 12 volts. So somewhere between the starter battery over there and the Sterling over here was a voltage drop of two volts. So we suspect that the feed for the DC-DC was coming via some electrics down in here. Behind this panel is a whole lot of electrics there at the bottom. And uh, that we think was finally going to the um, Measure battery, uh, so, sorry, to the starter battery, and uh, somewhere along that route we were losing two volts. So the answer was to run a new cable from the starter battery. We ran it under these uh, boards here, so it didn't film it while it was being done. But basically, nice brand new cable coming up into here, and uh, 16 mil cable. And uh, now when we run this, it is running at uh, 14 volts. So nice, it works really well. Uh, charges the battery at about 64 amps, no real voltage drop. And that's pretty good. We've tidied the old wire out of the way, just left it as it is. You can see that's a fairly thin wire, uh, six or 10 mil, I, th I think it's 10 mil. Uh, it would have been enough but we prefer a 16 mil for 60 amps and uh, that's a Victron standard for the 50 amp DC-DC so uh, perhaps a thicker cable should have been run in the first place and directly to the battery, not via some other electronics and uh, remember to fuse at the battery, now this thing works pretty well. well that's a very elementary uh, video, uh, it's not really, really not rocket science but in case you're having problems that's that's the step with the number of steps that you would take. So first check your starter battery, make sure that your voltage is okay there. Then check the voltage at the DC-DC and if there is a significant drop, you've it's either on a very thin cable, so it's not managing, or and or it could be going via the EBL, via some sort of electronics that it shouldn't. Uh, so somebody's taken a bit of a shortcut thinking that things were okay to draw from the EBL. Uh, whereas if you're running, especially a fairly high current DC-DC like this one at 60 amps, uh, you really should run a decent cable and a really a decent cable, 16 mil absolute minimum. I would, uh, if it was longer than five meters, go for 25 mil, run that directly to the battery and uh, remember to fuse close to the battery. So you'll need more than a 60 amp fuse. So 80 amp or 100 amp, the cable can carry 100 amps easily. So to fuse at 100 amps is okay. Uh, if we had an 80 amp fuse, it might've been a bit better, but 100 amp is fine. It's, at least you are fusing it within the cable, uh, with, you know, the limits, the current limits that the cable can carry. And uh, yeah, so hopefully useful. And we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.